best tree of them all. I can't wait to show the game. They're going to see I didn't let them down. They're going to love it. Hey guys, guys, check out the tree. I got it. Boy, are you stupid, Charlie Brown. What kind of a tree is that? You are supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? I told you we'd goof it up. You're not that kind you can depend on to do anything right. You're hopeless, Charlie Brown. Completely hopeless. Rats! You've been dumb before, Charlie Brown, but this time you really did it. <laughs> what a trick! Use some of that. What do you mean? It's not enough. How much is it? Ten dollars? It used to be a nickel. What in the world happened? Do you take insurance? Uh -huh. uh, Blue Cross Blue Shulks? Okay. Here you go. <sighs> Be wrong with me. Evidently, I'm the only person who cares about this little tree. I was in charge of choosing one for our play. When me and Linus went to the lot, this little guy just caught my eye. It was sort of a sad scene. Everyone else just didn't seem to notice him. They were just zooming past. They only had eyes for the big stuff. The 10 foot Fraser firs, towering evergreens, the aluminum trees that are guaranteed never to lose not one neon needle. This guy probably sat there all month long, just waiting, waiting for somebody to come along who thinks that he's special. Waiting for someone to say, you know what? I sure would like to put you in the middle of my window at home. Waiting for, for somebody to come up and say, of all the trees and all the lots and all the world, I choose you. I don't know, Doc. I suppose I'm just tired. It seems like there are a lot of little trees that just go unnoticed. Especially at Christmas time. Nobody has eyes for the small stuff. It's all about the show, the pageantry, the production. Like our Christmas pageant. Lucy, she made me in charge, made me the director. Then she directed me that we need a queen in the Christmas. Since when does Christmas need a queen? You can imagine that she casted herself in the role to jazz it up. Or my sister, Sally. She can't get her nose out of her Christmas list. And all the cats she wants from Santa in tens and twenties, she says. Even my own dog's gone commercial. He entered his house in a, what was it? Spectacular, super colossal neighborhood Christmas light and display contest in order to win, and I quote, money, money, money. Good grief. I don't know. It just bothers me. Why? 
Maybe part of me just gets upset when some things go ignored. It's not right. God made this little tree, right? And doesn't that mean that it is every bit as important as every other tree that God ever made? Even the ones that might look a little more normal, be a little prettier, easier on the eyes. And then yeah, yeah. Do I see myself in the little tree? I don't know, Doc. Maybe. He is kind of plain. Doesn't seem to have too many friends. Well, he does look prone to droopiness. I suppose I can relate. I know how it feels to be dismissed or go unnoticed. People walk right by me like I don't have anything to offer. Like I'm just some blockhead who can't fly a kite or win a baseball game or talk to some beautiful red-headed girl. I can't do any of those things. But that's beside the point. It still upsets me. Well, I think it does because folks are missing out. I feel like they're, they're missing out on everything else that I could have to offer. If they judge me or, or they make fun of me, sometimes just ignore me, they don't even get to know what God might be doing in my life. I mean, is it so strange to think that God might have some big things to say through little trees like me? You know, the play in there, Linus read me a story about people who were looking for God. They've been looking a long time looking hard, but you know where they were looking? Big trees. They were waiting for God to come as a ten-foot prince or a towering warrior dressed in all sorts of armor and ornaments. And guess what, Doc? God didn't come that way. God came as a little tree littlest of all. God came as a baby in a manger. Placed in a, in a carved out chunk of rock. His family was little tree. A teenage mother or a mom a, a poor carpenter dad. He was surrounded by little trees. Barnyard animals. Sneaky shepherds. Little trees all around. So nobody saw him. And he wasn't hiding. Goodness, he was born right out in the middle of the wide open in a manger. And everyone was in town for the census. Who knows how many people just walked right by him like this little guy. But they were looking to the big trees. Uh, they missed it. Well, sure, Doc, I think we do still miss it today. You know, God's out there and, and people are walking right by because they're only looking for God in the big trees, in the cool worship services with trendy music and mood lighting, and the big fancy preachers who have TV shows and book deals. In commercialized Christianity, where it's all about the show, all about how it looks on the outside. That's the big time. That's what people are concerned with. Everything else is just peanuts. Little trees. And people don't look for God in us. People don't consider that there might be a divine spark in the clumsy goof who wears the same clothes day after day after day. Or the kid whose past follows him around like a dirty cloud of dust everywhere he goes. 
They won't search for God's thumbprint in the artsy outsider whose head is always in his piano, or in the freckle-faced tomboy who marches to the beat of a different drum. It's easier just to ignore those little trees, because we don't look like the big ones. Not as pretty, not as fun, not as well-connected. Knowing us probably won't help the reputation any. We're shy, not very successful, or witty. We don't fit in to most people's understanding for how God works in the world. If anyone pays any attention to us, we sort of start to rub up against their understandings and force people to rethink a little bit and grow. And people don't like that. It's easier just to leave us alone. So they did. We just keep waiting. Waiting for someone to pick us. Waiting for someone to show us some love. Waiting for someone to look at us because they see that the light of the world has left a spark in us, too. But God, I don't think we should have to keep waiting. Because from the stories I've heard, God shows up in the little trees. Little trees like Mary or, or Joseph or the shepherds. Sure, they're big trees now because they have all these manger scenes and we know the story so well, but... They were just like me. But whenever there's a tree that's ignored, a tree that's outcast, a tree that doesn't fit in, I think that there's something of God to discover there. Because God came as a little tree. God came for the little tree. God lived and even died upon a thin, leafless little tree. Because God knew that deep down we're all fragile, withering little trees, longing for a home, longing to be wanted, longing to be chosen. Yeah. Doc, I think that might be it. I think maybe that's why I chose this little tree. Because I am this little tree. And God still chose me. Well, that's good news. Maybe we should all pay a little more attention to the little trees around us, especially at Christmas time. The folks whose holidays won't be as showy. Maybe those who can't afford decorations, lots of presents. Those who won't have family to, to spend the holidays with. People whose poor choices have made people just want to stay away from. Folks that nobody else is really going to look out for. And not because we pity them. Doc, they probably don't want our pity. We should pay attention to them because God pays attention to them. Because they're little trees. And, and that means that the God who comes through babies and Teenage girls and carpenters and shepherds just might be likely to show up in one of them. Wow. I'm no doctor, but I think that's what you call a breakthrough. You sure are good at this psychiatry stuff. And that yeah. Yeah, you just really have a way of putting things into a language that I can understand. So what's the next part of my therapy? Football. Oh. Okay, you're the doctor, but could I not be the kicker? Um, I have some real deep seated trust issues in that position, and that's going to be another psychiatric session altogether.